Oh, hello. In tonight's video, uh, today's video, you don't know what time it is. In this video, uh, we're going to look at sentries in Kill Team and try and speculate wildly on what they might be. And once again, I think I have the answer. Um, and I'll be wrong, but I think I have the answer. So this is what we're talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about at all, if you go to Warhammer Community, if you look, it's Sunday. On Sunday, they always post their posts about all the things that will be coming up for pre-order next Saturday, right? And it's Age of Sigma stuff. Nothing for us, nothing for Kill Team. But they have previewed White Dwarf. And on the front of White Dwarf, new rules for sentries in Kill Team. And then you read all the text and it says, there are also rules and missions for using sentries in Kill Team. And then you watch the This Week in Warhammer video and there's no details about that whatsoever. Sometimes there is and sometimes that video is a top tip for people that are like wheedling things out of the Games Workshop website. They will show a bit more detail in that video, but not this week. Top tip. Right, rules and missions for using sentries in Kill Team. Remember that word missions because I've seen some people in the various discords, hopefully, tongue-in-cheek saying, oh, maybe it's... Uh, Maybe the name of the new Custodes team is going to be the, the Sentries of Terror, and it's going to be that. It's like, no. If it was going to be a new team, they'd put the name of the 40k faction on the cover, like they have every single time, uh, because they want to sell copies of the magazine to people who don't subscribe. New rules for Sentries in Kill Team. Well, we need to go back in time. So we're familiar with Kill Team, hopefully. Um bit further back than that bit further back than that uh a, a bit further back that was a digital only supplement by the way um but a bit further back than that i could talk about phil kelly's kill team that was in chapter approved but i'm going to go right back to the beginning of kill team yes it's the fourth edition big rulebook supplement kill team Okay, so for those of you that weren't alive 18 years ago, thank you for making me feel really old. Um, but the fact that most people haven't made this connection and don't seem to have made this connection is slightly making me question. I mean, you know, this is the time of not all the base rooms are goblin green, but some of them still are. Look at these on Schaefer's chances, right? As a total aside, I really want there to be good proxy rules for Schaefer's chances in Kill Team. I really want Games Workshop to just do that. I mean, you could almost do it. Right, I'm going to go off on a mad tangent now. Watch me. But, like, you've got the, the demo, a demolitions type guy. Like, Creek have got a demo guy. So, you, so you've got a demo guy. And you've got, like, a comms, a comms guy here. That's cool. And obviously a sergeant with a plasma pistol and a power sword. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. And a sniper. We can do that. Okay, that's good. And uh, we got a melter gun. That's 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 good. Um, you know, and then it just starts to fall down. Like that guy can't have a heavy bolter or a missile launcher. Uh, I guess I guess these guys here, the, these could be regular regular troopers. Like, oh come on. Now and, and this guy with the knives. Like if you watch my video about the chaos guard, he'd be really cool in chaos guard. Like, but it just it doesn't quite fit, especially that rocket look. There's nothing with a, a guard chassis like that six seven wound seven wound chassis that you want that can have a missile launcher. But I really want to play with Schaefer's chances in kill team. Anyway, here's what we're talking about. This is the first ever edition of skill team. Kill skill team, yes. Uh, let's talk about some skill team. Let's just correct that there. Uh, skill team. It's nearly bedtime, everybody, so I'm feeling a little bit silly. Right. The notion of this small-scale game is based on those movies we know and love where a crack team of experts or desperados trained by a single-minded double-hard drill instructor go in and triumph against the odds. We're all familiar with this formula due to good old Hollywood and countless films that cover these themes. Like, that paragraph would not be in a modern Games Workshop book. Not only because the kids today haven't seen The Dirty Dozen or Where Eagles Dare or any of these films, but m more because they, they wouldn't talk about talk to you as if you were a human being that existed in the world 
um, everything is like in law. Whereas I, I love the sort of conversational tone of right, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. It's good. The veterans amongst you will have spotted that this concept borrows heavily from the infamous last chances of the Imperial Guard, the hard-bitten Colonel Schaefer and his recruits from the Imperial Guard penal legions, but extends it to a game system for all races rather than just focusing on the Imperial Guard. In this way, Kill Team can feature a team of Orc commandos sneaking into an Ekron tomb complex, a pack of mercenaries using the cover of night to liberate a priceless Dark Eldar artifact from its twisted shrine, or a squad of Space Marine scouts avoiding patrolling gun drones on their mission to assassinate a Tower Therial. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, okay, but this is the idea. Uh, it, it's it's objective-based, small-scale Warhammer 40,000, where each model is an individual unit. But it is asymmetric, right? That's the that's the key thing. It is is asymmetric. So the good guys, the kill team, face off against the bad guys, the brute squads, on a four by four table. Blah blah blah. But you've got this concept in this old version of kill team: the good guys versus the brute squads. Okay, you do stuff. Uh, the kill team player begins the game with the kill team, which usually includes a sergeant. Rules for creating kill teams to address later, blah, blah, blah. The Brute Squad begins the game with a varying number of models, depending on the race that you take, right? There's a table that I may or may not have put in the presentation where it's like, you, you go, okay, I'm orcs. So it's okay, you get like 15 orcs. Whereas the actual kill team is, is based on, or sorry, the skill team is based on a points by system. I'm sorry, I have a cold again. I'm like a cold factory, which is why I sound like a duck. I'm very sorry for that. So, this is what I wanted to talk about really, that's why these are big and legible. So, here's how we play Kill Team. The Kill Team player chooses table edge, blah blah, the Kill Team player will reach the objective. The Brute Squad player may activate or deactivate D6 Brute Squads at the beginning of each turn. Only activated Brute Squads can move. You might want to place a coloured dice or token by activating Brute Squads. Bear in mind that although activated Brute Squads can move, they don't necessarily move in the direction the Brute Squad player wants. So this is like an AI, right? Like almost like, it, it's not, it's not quite single player because once they activate, they, they, they kind of liven up and then they're controlled by the other player. Uh, it says here, it's often advisable to leave the Brute Squads nearest the objective deactivated and therefore static for the first few turns, so don't wander off and leave the kill team a clear run at their objective. Deactivated squads remain, and then we go up here, in place. No doubt swapping stories about the girls, she fungi, or tentacle brood beasts back home. That kind of humour you just wouldn't see anymore. But anyway, I'll stop being nostalgic and old. Uh, in the movement phase of the Brute Squad player's turn, each activated Brute Squad moves as if it were a single... Ba -ba -da -ba 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 sentry. That was the entire point of this video. That word there. Right. So a sentry is a concept. Uh, it's defined elsewhere in this rulebook because they used it in some big Warhammer 40,000 missions as well. But it's okay because it's defined for us here as well. That means that during the Brute Squad player's movement phase, each player rolls a dice, the control roll for each Brute Squad in turn. The player that scores the highest moves the enemy members of the Brute Squad up to that many inches in the direction of its choice, of his choice, sorry. Yeah, that's what, oh wow, that's super illegible. Sorry, excuse me. We're not having this green, but yeah, that's the bit we're looking at, that bit there. Yeah, let's not make it super illegible for everybody, Phil. That would be really, really bad, this bit here. Okay. Now, I'm not saying the new White Dwarf rules for the current edition of Kill Team, which is now 18 years after these rules were written, are going to be exactly that. But I think they're going to be that idea. They're going to be a new set of missions for the special form of narrative play that doesn't require you to commit to a campaign. And I reckon they'll be slightly asymmetric. I reckon it'll be a Kill Team versus... Maybe it'll be two kill teams, and each kill team will get to have a certain number of sentries, and the sentries will move automatically. But maybe it'll be one side gets sentries, and the sentries are like extras, so it's like, oh, you get four extra trooper models, and they're at, then once they activate, you get the rest of your kill team. Now let's look at that idea of activation, okay? So, 
A few more of these. This dice roll is modified by the number of clacks and counters the Brute Squad player has accrued. So remember, this is the dice roll for deciding who gets to control the sentry. The, the, the player that is playing as the sentries and wants to move them towards the kill team, or the player who is not using them at all, and uh, uh, who is using the kill team wants to move them away to go around the corner to go look at something stupid. Okay? So you have these clacks and counters. We'll look at those in a second. Uh, brute Squad's going to every more than six. Yada, yada, yada. We're not actually trying to learn this game. We're just trying to get the gist of it. In the result of the control roll, take into account any modifiers for the clacks and counters and things like that. They they move that squad that number of inches, as even the thickest henchman has a brain and will act sensibly more often than not. Kill teams are fearless, hence automatically pass the Egypt test. Brute Squad's test on that will modify leadership for all morale. Blah, 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 I don't care about that. Right, let's go back down here to Kallax Encounters. So this box out down the bottom here, right? Kallax Encounters simulate the alarms of the Brute Squad's headquarters being raised and the sounds of battle bringing defenders scurrying to defend their territory. Each time a Brute Squad, activated or deactivated, comes within spotting range, its initiative value plus the number of Kallax Encounters accrued in inches of the kill team, for any reason, it spotted the intruders and becomes aware. Aware units may act as normal from the start of the next turn, moving, shooting, assaulting under the Brute Squad player's control for the rest of the game. Whenever a Brute Squad becomes aware, for whatever reason, add a Kallax Encounter to the Brute Squad uh, player's store. Also add a Kallax Encounter whenever the kill team shoots. So anywhere, because the gun makes a noise, right? Uh, teams that are aware don't screw further counters because they, they don't care, they're already worried about the kill team. And yeah, it doesn't matter what you use, the Clarks Encounters, but keep them in a pile. They're per squad, not per mortal, because in this version of Kill Team, the Brutes were little groups of three. Um, right. I'm not trying to teach you how to play 18-year-old Kill Team. If you want to find, there's PDFs of the old rulebooks readily available on Google. Uh, if you want to find out and have a proper read through in your own time, because it sounds really cool, then you can. But what I would suggest doing is waiting for next month's White Dwarf, which I think is going to be taking this principle of an uh, asymmetric narrative one-off game, and uh, bring it into the Kill Team game that we have right now in the year of our Lord, 2021, that we know and love. Um, that's what I think it's going to be. It's going to be a new way to play, uh, probably that is a kind of a fun thing that was made to hark back. Obviously, somebody in the design team was old enough to remember this this stuff, uh, or was inspired by this stuff, and wanted to kind of inject it back in to, to Kill Team. Uh, that's my call, that's my marker going down, that's what's coming in White Dwarf. It's probably going to be a traitor guard kill team list now because that's what usually happens. So, here is the million dollar question Do we want this? Are we so. Like, I like playing kill team fairly competitively. I like worrying about how to play it optimally, how to go to events and not win the events. I don't live in London, so I'm not going to win a UK kill team event because I can't play every week against 20 different people but i would like to like win games at events when i go to Warhammer world right i i care a little bit about being competitive and so does something that's totally not competitive it doesn't matter i hear so many people going and we've reviewed all the rules and then there's the narrative stuff nobody cares and i've done that as well i don't i've never talked about the the spec ops rules on this channel not because i don't like narrative play some of my best games have been narrative games um, but because I live now in Essex and I have basically one friend that I regularly play against, uh, Zimbad, who I mentioned a lot on the channel, who's basically like a, the, 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 it, if this channel was large enough to have staff, it would be me and Mrs. T.I. and then Zimbad. And it's the three of us that kind of make the channel, even though it's only my voice that you hear, right? Because he has to put up with all of my kind of, Many of these videos are conversations that I have with him and then it ferments into a video. But the point is, because my hometown meta is three people, 
I don't feel like three people is enough. I've never felt, I feel like you need a minimum of four people to support kind of narrative campaign play where you're playing against different people. And otherwise it's just two people playing their game and getting stronger equally at equal times. And if one person is just better than the other person, they'll just get better. And it, I just feel like you need four people to play any kind of campaign as a minimum, right? Six is better. Eight is possibly best, but that's, my view but like a one-off narrative where it's like oh let's play a narrative game with you i, I will we'll totally play this if it is what i say if it's, if it's a one-off narrative game yeah we'll totally play this and we'll that'll be fun but is it what the community wants is it what you want let me know in the comments right and while you're down there writing a comment sorry to be tedious if you could subscribe to the channel really helps me out. i know i'm a bastard but it has to be done um so is it something that you're looking forward to? Like, I feel like it would be easy to look at this and go, I don't want this. I want the bespoke rules for Plague Runes or Necrons or something like that. And I would encourage you not to view it as a, oh, well, it's fine, but I would rather have had this because that might not be the choice. This might be the kind of thing we're going to get for Kill Team going forwards. I don't know, but I speculate, right? The six, no, the eight teams from Boxes, plus the four teams from White Dwarf, right? So the 12 bespoke teams that we will have once the next box comes out, with the, the Phobos box. I reckon all those rules are written before the first release of the Octarius set. And only now are we starting to get stuff that perhaps wasn't written with that in mind. And even though this might have been still the tail end of that initial development cycle. I also think that Games Workshop is going to sell these rules to us for centuries in Kilty. And they're going to sell these to us again in, in the uh, annual that I am certain is coming. Right, I'm certain it's coming. Uh, is this something that we want? Maybe I'm totally wrong, and it really is going to be uh, a Custodes team or, or little turrets that you can buy or something totally different. I don't know. But I think it's going to be that, some sort of asymmetric narrative rules. Not quite single player, um, but with an AI like element to part of it. Were the, and this will live or die on how fun is it for the player that's not just playing their standard kill team and going to do cool things, right? I remember so many, like, uh, Blackstone Fortress, uh, the Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. In theory, that had you know, like, oh, you can play with five players, and the fifth player can control the bad guys, you'll find that then they make slightly more intelligent decisions. I'm like, yeah, but doing that kind of games mastery role isn't fun. Really, I, unless it's a really well made game, being the games master isn't fun, especially like half of the fun of being a games master, I guess, is, is if you're if there's like three players and one games master, that's one thing, but like a versus scenario, everyone's going to want to play as their kill team, right? Like, I don't know, and who gets out of the end of the morning and goes, I want to control the faceless mooks, I want to see if we can make the bad guys win, you know? So, I think it'll be two kill teams who have a certain number of sentries who are maybe additional like trooper models and then they, they kind of do a little thing and then they get activated and then the other guys come on. I don't know. We'll have to see exactly how it works, but that's the thrust of the idea. It's going to be a one-off narrative alternative game mode. It's probably going to be quite a lot of pages in the White Dwarf if it's going to be scenarios because it's going to be like two pages per scenario plus two pages of the of the rules in general for sentries. I think it could be really fun and really cool and I'd urge you to have an open mind and I'd urge you to like the video, subscribe, comments, buy things at Element Games, all that stuff that helps me out if, if you would. That would be great and I am really in need of a bed now. So thank you for listening everybody and I hope you have a really pleasant rest of your evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it is that you're doing with yourselves. Cheerio.